Um, not only that, but I feel like over time, Python bags, they start to like get crusty and like wrinkle up and the texture becomes really yuck. Like that one with the howl on it and like, oh my gosh, in the black. It's $6,000, but I feel like, you know, Louis Vuitton bags, there's like $6,000, but not that impressive. So I just feel like Louis Vuitton for what it is, is like becoming a little bit too like, cocky with the pricing. Hey guys, welcome to my channel. I'm Jess. If you love shopping and handbag videos, please like and subscribe to my channel. All your support would be great because I'm trying to get to 10,000 subs this year. And yes, thank you so much. <sighs> yes, I got a perm. This is my new hairstyle. I hope it stays curly because I have dead straight hair naturally and it's very limp and thin and kind of boring. I decided to get a perm because I was trying to change up my life a little bit. You know, I have realized that I have a bit of a shopping problem. Treating myself to like a cool hairstyle might fix my, um, I don't know, like obsession with shopping, but honestly it didn't really work because this morning, uh, the House Moving Castle Loewe collab, um, there was like a pre-launch for it and I signed up and I actually did buy something because I could not sleep guys. Like I had extreme FOMO for this collab. So I bought something and yeah, I just wanted to let you know, guys know that I failed. But I, I realized that actually if there's something that I've become obsessed with, I find it very hard to resist and it makes me quite stressed not to buy it. So I think I'm going to start like really not following a lot of um, consignment store pages Instagram, like all these sorts of things, like I really need to stop like searching because as soon as I see something that I become obsessed with, like I feel like I need to buy it. And this House Moving Castle collaboration, I just, I'm not, I'm not gonna lie guys, I became obsessed with it, like too obsessed. I managed to snag something, but we'll see if my order gets fulfilled because I heard that like in previous years, people bought something from like the Spirited Away collection and then their order got canceled because you know, it couldn't get fulfilled so we'll see if there's going to be an unboxing for that but anyway um I actually wanted to talk about handbags that I don't think I would ever buy again uh five handbags because over the last few years I have bought so many handbags it is like beyond ridiculous I've had so many phases like my Chanel phase Louis Vuitton phase vintage new like just Gucci, Celeron, like a lot. And even before I had a YouTube, I was collecting a lot of bags. I've been buying and selling bags for a while. I mean, I don't think I needed to buy that many bags and sell that many bags, but I think from doing so, I have learned a lot about like things that I wouldn't necessarily want to buy again. Um, so these are five things that five bags I wouldn't buy again. Um, also, this was my uh, bag of the day. This is my Omnibus PM. Um, it is an Hermes bag that I picked up secondhand from Vestier Collective. It's actually, I think this bag is from around 20, 2008. And it's in Clemence leather. And it's based on a, like a vintage style from the 70s. I really like the shape. It actually reminds me a little bit of the Loewe Amazona bag as well, which is a really cute bag. Oh, and this is what's in my bag, guys. Pokemon. I have my little um, wallet from Loewe. Um, and then just my AirPods and my phone, as you can see. And I actually like cut up a bag organizer. I put it in there from a different bag. But I just love this bag. The inside is like goat skin. Yeah, it's just, I really recommend the Omnibus if you can find it pretty loved. So firstly, a bag that I wouldn't buy again is a bag that is way too small. Now, I love the look of micro bags. I think they are adorable. But often if it's like a Chanel or Louis Vuitton micro bag, it is just so expensive for what it is. I do have a vintage Chanel 1991 micro bag, which is honestly very iconic and adorable, but I never use it because it just fits, like it barely fits my phone. It just doesn't fit much. And I just feel like for, if you're paying several thousands of dollars, I would prefer like a small bag or a mini bag that actually fits things. I was a little bit tempted by the Louis Vuitton um, heart bag. I did try that on in store and I must say it was adorable. The bubblegram pink one was so cute, but um, honestly, it didn't really seem like it would fit much. And 
I mean, for that price, 2,600 Australian dollars, I was like, mm, I'd rather just like add on a few extra, like one or 2,000 dollars and get a normal size bag. So I don't honestly think I will buy another like micro bag again, unless it's like a contemporary brand that is like under a thousand dollars or like even under 500 dollars. Um, another micro bag I was tempted by is the new Heen pouch from the House Moving Castle collaboration. I was so tempted by this, guys. There is one, one with Sophie's face, which is so adorable, and then there's one with Hal. But one of the reasons why I didn't buy one of these is because I feel like I needed to buy both to be a set. That's the first thing. And secondly, it's really just like a card holder with a strap, which honestly, I was very tempted to buy it because the price isn't too bad, but I didn't buy it because I was like, no, Jess, no micro bags. So yes, I am not going to buy a bag that is micro or like less than a mini. Another bag that I will not buy is anything in Python or Snake. Now, um, in the past, I actually had a Gucci Dionysus with a uh, Python and it had like elephants on it. I never really showed this on my channel because this was before I had a YouTube, but I don't know, I got this like on a, I think I got it for a really good deal, and I bought it when I was like, ha I had a lot of Gucci bags at the time. Um, firstly, there was nothing really that wrong with the bag, but I just think like Python and Snake, it's a bit creepy, like I, I don't know, for me, I don't really like the texture of the scales, and I don't like the way that Python and uh, Snake wears over time. I don't, I actually quite like Ostrich, and I think Alligator looks pretty cool to be honest, and I know um, those who are against Exotic, um, yeah, I understand that as well. Um, I am not against Exotics, but I... Yeah, I just don't like snake or python, not for ethical reasons to be honest, just because I don't like the texture and I don't like the way it wears. So the problem with python, especially because the scales are so large, I find that you really, if you wear a python bag, uh, it, once you wear it, like if it's rubbing against your body, the, the scales can lift up and they can actually fall off, which it just like kind of ruins the bag. Um, not only that, but I feel like over time, python bags, they start to like get crusty and like wrinkle up and the texture becomes really yuck and I just also like even when they're new I just don't think it looks that like cute it kind of looks a little bit like frumpy to me or like I don't know it reminds me of like Cruella de Vil or something like something kind of like yuck I just don't like the look of it I just don't love the texture or the aesthetic of python or snakeskin um and anyway that gucci bag was really random I think I just bought it because it had elephants on it but I wasn't a big fan of the python trim um, and that's just me personally, so I can't ever see myself buying a python bag. Um, I know Bulgari do, like, really cool, like, rainbow, like, effects on python and that sort of thing. Lizard, I actually quite like the look of lizard, but that doesn't have that same crustiness to it that, like, python has. Yeah, so I just, I don't really like snake or python bags, just for the, purely because of the texture and the high maintenance, um, attributes that it has. I don't think I am that into big logo anymore. Um, I noticed that um, most of my bags now, and I didn't really do this on purpose, but I no most of my bags don't have a big logo um, anymore or like any like strong like letter or anything like that on it. Honestly, maybe just like this Chanel bag, which has a CC, but I was honestly trying to sell this and I cannot sell it because... I don't know why I can't sell it, but, um, yeah, I just don't have many, like, branded, like, strong branded bags anymore. Oh, actually, I do have one. Probably this, like, Constance with the H, but technically you're supposed to wear it this way, so, I mean, that's quite obviously H. Um, and also, I don't really mind the Constance, but the reason why I bought the Ruli bag is because I thought it was a little bit more easy to style and a little less, like, obnoxious, because I feel like the H is very recognisable. Same with, like, a Birkin, like, it's very iconic, so that's why I don't wear my Birkin as much, because I feel like it's very obviously Hermes, and I sometimes just don't want to be so, like, showy-offy. So, I thought the Ruli was a little bit more, like, under the radar, and I, I could imagine myself wearing it more. Actually, I think it's supposed to be a H, this way. I don't know, I'm not sure actually. I think it's just the Shondonk logo. Anyways, um, I just like, I prefer bags that don't scream a brand, even if it is recognizable as a brand. Like, I just find like I reach for bags that don't have obvious logo. And I think that's also because I have a lot of clothes with logo. So I have a lot of t-shirts with like, you know, like this Fururuchi or like Burberry or something um, on the top. And 
sometimes if I'm wearing like a logo bag with a logo top, it kind of clashes. So I find like wearing a plain bag with like more crazy outfits, which I tend to do, like I have like a print or something going on. Um, it's just easier to style. So, and that's why I find like for me, a Louis Vuitton monogram is kind of hard to style. Like I've, I've collected a little Louis Vuitton monogram, but fi I find it kind of just like is too much on an outfit sometimes. If you wear really like simple outfits it can be styled quite easily but I find like I'm always wearing something a little bit crazy and so the monogram just like is a bit ah uh, it's a bit challenging like I just it doesn't look bad but I think like a plain bag would look better so yeah that's why I'm not like huge on like big logos or like strong branding just because I find it harder to style and I'm kind of over the um I don't want to I don't know I'm just like over that look a little bit so Yes, um, and actually my bunny bag, where is my bunny? Oh yeah, my bunny bag has a strap on it, um, which says Lueve, 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 and I've, and I, that was like my least favorite part of the bag. I kind of wish that they just kept it to like this logo, um, because I don't like how it says Lueve like that, but I guess I was thinking with this bag I could even wear it with like a pearl strap, so I might try that out later, but yeah, anyways, um. I'm just not into like the big branding, but for some reason I don't mind it on clothes, so I don't know. I just discovered that in myself. Um, next bag I would never buy, again probably, is, uh, oh okay, I wrote, okay, I wrote in my notes Louis Vuitton or Chanel bags. I will never buy another Louis Vuitton or Chanel bag. Okay, well, honestly I think that's a bit hard to say, like, for the rest of my life, I'm never going to buy a Louis Vuitton or Chanel bag. I mean, that's a little bit being a bit dramatic here, but I can't imagine myself like that. I have no desire to buy a Chanel or Louis Vuitton bag right now. I am really curious by uh, Joseph Duclos, uh, which I recently discovered, thanks to Jen. And I'm very curious by Delvaux. Loewe, I'm obsessed with Loewe right now. Obviously, I'm, I'm a slave for Hermes, so like... Pff, Louis Vuitton and Chanel are just like not brands that I can see myself like diving into any further. I just don't have any like motivation to collect those brands anymore because I feel like I'm a person who just becomes obsessed with like one or two things and once I'm over something I just have to move on. So I feel like Chanel and Louis Vuitton I kind of already got a feel for and I'm kind of don't imagine myself buying another Louis Vuitton or Chanel bag. Not only that but Chanel bags now are so expensive at the store like it is crazy. Like, you can't even get, like, a normal bag for less than $7,000 Australian at Chanel. And I don't like the quality of the leather anymore. I just think it's very hit and miss. Uh, and just, I don't think it's acceptable, honestly. And, you know, there's a lot of reasons why I wouldn't buy Chanel anymore, to be honest. Like, a lot of reasons. Um, and then Louis Vuitton is also quite expensive for what it is like even the kusama collection there were some really cool pieces but honestly if you compare the pricing of the kusama collection compared to like the house moving castle lueve collection i actually think that the house moving castle looks more expensive because a lot of the like the leather looks better the leather marquetry the details look more like especially the amazona bags like that one with the howl on it and like oh my gosh in the black it's six thousand dollars but i feel like you know, Louis Vuitton bags, there's like $6,000, but not that impressive. So I just feel like Louis Vuitton, for what it is, is like becoming a little bit too like cocky with the pricing. I'm just like, yeah, just because it's Louis Vuitton doesn't mean like it's that good. Well, I'd rather like buy something for the same price that is a little bit like more interesting, like a Loewe bag. So I don't know, that's just my opinion. I think like Louis Vuitton pricing is now like way too high. And also the quality control at Louis Vuitton is also very hit and miss. And I just, yeah, I'm just over it as well. So that's why I don't think I'm going to buy another Louis Vuitton or Chanel bag, to be honest. And if you love Louis Vuitton and Chanel, guys, like, I mean, I can see why you do. I have had so many Louis Vuitton and Chanel bags like I was also obsessed but I just know for me now I'm just not obsessed with it anymore so yes <laughs> that's that um and then finally a, a thing that I wouldn't buy I really don't want to buy again is very damaged pre-love bags for good deals now it really depends because guys I'm going to upload an unboxing this weekend of me um unboxing a vintage bag that I want to restore uh, yeah, I basically bought this on Vestier after my holiday on Impulse, and in that video I'm going to have different hairstyles, so just letting you know, I've recorded that like last week, um, but I wanted to upload it this weekend because I already unboxed my Lindy 
mini Lindy this week, and so I wanted to spread out the unboxings. Anyways, um, yeah, I don't want to keep buying really dinged up bags, pre-loved, because I, I feel like I would rather just skip it and save the money to buy a fresher bag because sometimes you can like get sucked into buying a pre-loved bag for a really good deal that's in very bad condition and I just find that sometimes those bags are a little bit yucky, they're a little bit too smelly and they're like beyond repair and I've really fallen for like buying junk bag junk condition bags in the past and they're at a point where maybe I, I like you know maybe they're like five hundred dollars or something but still five hundred dollars is a lot of money like I feel like for a junk condition bag like if it's like a Chanel or Hermes junk condition bag you're still going to be paying a lot of money um and I just feel like maybe I should skip it because sometimes you find some really good deals on like junk bags but but I'm gonna say except like a Birkin or a Kelly like if I find like a really dinged up Birkin or Kelly for like a really good deal I might be tempted because I think like a dinged up Kelly can look kind of cool um you know like Mary Kate and Ashley vibe um and I know Winnie B LV um is also looking for like a, a trashed Birkin and I feel like that would be kind of cool but it would have to be like an absolute deal like I'm talking like under two thousand dollars otherwise I just don't think it's worth buying a bag that like messed up because it's kind of like a little bit it gets to a point where it's a little bit too gross that's just how i feel i don't want to keep buying junk condition bags because i did buy one recently and i kind of regret it but i'm going to show you guys on the weekend and i'm going to try and restore it as well um yeah so anyways thanks for watching my video today i kind of it was a bit all over the place but um i hope you enjoyed it anyway please like and subscribe to my channel and i'll talk to you on my next one bye